Welcome back to Are You a Fan, where we explore individual characters from your favorite sci-fi, action, and fantasy genres. A big thank you to Moonbound Productions for supporting today's episode. If you would like to express your support, please like and share the show. Here's your hosts, Dick Rail and Joker. Okay, question for the folks at home. Would you rather have a high-powered mech suit and that to go underwater, or would you rather just have gills so you can, you know, breathe underwater? What you think, Joker? But definitely, I know I prefer the mech suit because if you go with certain renditions of having gills, is are you gonna be able to breathe above water? Like, are you stuck in the water now? That is a valid question and one that I did not consider. Uh, if I was able to like kind of go back and forth, I'd prefer the gills just because like I f- mech suits can fail. <laughs> oh yeah. It's definitely between, if you had the ability to just go willy-nilly between the two, yes, I'd rather the gills. But if I'm stuck... Yeah, I'd rather, then I'd rather the mech suit, because then I can still at least go back and forth. Yeah, just because, like, I, I won't lie. The ocean is, I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of the ocean. There's a lot of things in there that are just, like, want us as humans dead. So I just... And how many things we don't know about down there. Exactly. So, like, the ocean already, I'm not thrilled when I have to deal with it. <laughs> I'm like, there's a box jellyfish like the size the size of a like the size of a marble that can kill you. How are you supposed to see that coming? <laughs> you don't. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, folks, that leads us into our character for this week. We are going to be dealing with the Black Manta, villain to Aquaman. And uh, let's get into it. He was created by Bob Haney, Bob Haney, and Nick Cardi. He made his debut in Aquaman number 35 in September 1967. Black Manta had no definitive origin story until issue number six of 1993 Aquaman series. Holy cow, that's a long time. <laughs> yeah, that is a lot of years and stories to have no real background right like oh hey what is his background we don't know so we're just gonna continue to skip it for what 30 years almost that's about just under 27 ish yeah somewhere around there somewhere it, it, it's close to 30 it's close to being as old as we as long as we've we've been alive yeah no we're we're older than his Lack of backstory. Oh, Not by much. But. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that's that's scary. Okay, so uh, uh, let's get let's get into his in-world stuff. Yeah, you know, kind of with the issue of no backstory. They've, over the years, given him numerous origin stories, Ooh, which yeah. none have really been defined as the main version I've found. Same. They're all just kind of, hey, here's one version. We're going to keep it in in the story, but we're not going to tell you it's wrong. And it goes all the way from being a young boy kidnapped and enslaved by pirates on their ship. An autistic child experimented on at Arkham Asylum. Because, you know, the asylum is very dark. Yeah, it is. Uh, and what I've seen is kind of more the co- more common one is a ruthless mercenary caught in a mutual cycle of vigilance with Aquaman over the death of both of their fathers. I've noticed that one seems to be the most preferred one with the least amount of, uh, uh, how do you say, um, bad? <laughs> like, it is definitely the cleanest of the three. <laughs> yeah, definitely the, the one that you look at and you're like, I mean, they're mercenaries, but like, given our other options, let's go with this one. <laughs> right. And I, I feel like that one, too, has kind of been with the with the Aquaman movie kind of more set in stone as the main one, which I did appreciate them going with that storyline yeah. because uh, before I, you know, fully did the research on this character, the main two that I knew of was the autistic one and this, the mercenary one. They were like treasure hunters and mercenaries, the pirate one, that one got dark. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I looked at that one a bit. Anything with kidnapping kids and enslaving them is dark. Yeah, that one gets like... I mean, the the, the autistic storyline is messed up enough. Oh, yeah. I mean, it is involving Arkham Asylum, so of course that one's going to be messed up and dark. Yeah. 
I mean, anything that comes out of that place is dark. Which, we, you know, we will get to that as we proceed on talking about him. And that's so, uh, yeah, let's uh, get into a few of his backstories. This one, uh, fans, not going to lie, kind of an amalgamation of a few of his backstories because they all seemed fairly interesting. And, yeah, no, so let's get into this. Uh, let's, I guess we should start out. Real name is David Hyde. Which I did see, I guess it's never been officially documented that his last name is Hyde. Um, you did have it somewhere later on that it, that was confirmed in a... I don't remember which one. We'll get to it eventually, because uh, I, I know you had it in there. Okay. Or, I, either that or is the first name. It was one of parts of his name. Yeah, okay. Uh, grew, uh, grew up in Baltimore, Maryland, and I believe, uh, yeah, yeah, we're gonna, we're getting into the pirate one. Woo! Yeah, because you kind of did it as, as that first paragraph talked about the three versions, you kind of went a little bit of each in order. Okay, so cool. Yeah, starting with the pirate one. Uh, so yeah, he grew up in, uh, Baltimore, Maryland, and, uh, loved to pl- play by the Chesapeake Bay. This is where he would be kidnapped by pirates and forced to do slave labor for them while taking physical abuse. And, okay, I don't know a lot about the coastal cities. I just I just feel like pirates near the coast of America aren't as prevalent of a thing. Yeah, there's definitely an odd story to have, especially in more modern times. Yeah, like, I know there are still pirates. Like, that's still a big thing, especially, like, near Somalia, near... uh, When you get more towards, like, other countries that aren't as... We we would consider... as America? I guess... Maybe maybe not an accurate statement, but I guess what we not would, an inaccurate statement. I guess what we would say in this in this country is third world countries. Like they're like they're not really a first world country, which is a also a kind of a loaded statement. Hence why I avoided that one. Yeah, <laughs> but but I mean yeah. You know, Saying America ain't warmon or is less warmongering. I'm like, who are we talking about? Oh, I didn't say less warmongering. Oh, okay. I meant as in we were the more of the warmongering countries. Ah, okay. Then yeah, no, no, you are <laughs> that is an accurate <laughs> statement. But yeah, so bit of an odd story that yeah, no, I, I can, not, can definitely see now why it's kind of the lesser known of his origins. I could see that. It doesn't really fit in modern times. They just put it out there and just at some point somebody's like, "Eh, pirates. (laughs) Uh, One day while um, on the pirate ships, uh, he would spot Aquaman with a pot of dolphins and try to signal him for help. It would go unnoticed and cause him to snap, killing one of his captors. Which, I mean, yeah. Damn. Uh, hating hating the cold sea and Aquaman, uh, he would vow to rule over it. Which, you know, this is kind of one of those, you know, that classic uh, villain archetype. Yep. Hero didn't save you. So now I'm going to hate him forever, and he's my villain now. Yeah. Which, I mean, is, is no... Is, I mean, I guess they wouldn't be if they were villains in that, but like, I would just love to see one villain just take a moment to self-reflect and be like, I mean, the guy's saving the ocean. Did he? Was it really his fault that he didn't notice me? Well, but all we know is he saw him with a pot of dolphins. We don't know if he was actually doing anything or if he was just traveling. True, true. That valid point. I was like, because from what little it says, he could have just been going right by, doing nothing else. <laughs> Get into the water. <laughs> Just cover the water. I'll save you. Uh, an alternate version was given in issue number eight of the 2003 Aquaman series. In this origin, the boy who would become Black Manta, and this was where we get dark, was an autistic orphan placed in Gotham City's Arkham Asylum. <laughs> because this was written in 2003, and what? <laughs> like, damn, that's... I mean, Great yeah. job with the mental with the me- mental stuff, DZ. They've never been good. I don't know what you expected out of that. I don't know either. I mean, yeah, I get. Let's let's proceed. 
Um, so he would feel comfortable in freezing cold water, but found cotton sheets excruciatingly painful. Because the attendants in, at Arkham didn't know how to deal with autism, they would end up restraining him to the bed and he struggled as he struggled and screamed whenever they tried putting him to bed. In this version, young Black Manta was also fascinated when he saw Aquaman on the television. Which, yeah, um, I mean, I find it funny that like they do get pretty accurate as to how autism works as far as sensation on the skin. For some people, yeah. Yeah, like that is a trait of autism so an interesting like like somebody did their research and then was just like f it (laughs) i mean it's a great way to make a villain unfortunately it is and arguably i also do say it was smart of them to be like he was at arkham asylum which is known for its effed up uh medical staff and and running experiments on patients so, you know, that, that was actually, okay, maybe they actually handled this better than I thought. Uh, the boy would end up being subject to experimental treatments. One treatment seemed to clear the boy's head, but left him violent as a result. He killed the scientists who had administered the treatment and escaped from Arkham. Kudos, boys. Right. <laughs> We're holding down the fort. <laughs> I mean, hearing that boy just out of nowhere and escape like that with no real prior training, you just look in and you're like, I mean, how are they even supposed to stop Bane? Right. That how guy's, are they supposed to stop anybody? Yeah. I'm like, half these, like most of these people are like geniuses and like criminal masterminds and they can't stop, they can't stop a kid who just had a rage problem and no training. My guess, they probably underestimated him expecting nothing from him. They're like, oh, we're just going to put the worst possible guards around him. Right, or doctors or whatever. Oh man, yeah, that one backfired. <laughs> yeah, if I ran Arkham, I would make I'd, heads would roll. <laughs> uh, as an adult, the man who had become Black Manta designed a costume, which primarily um, was a black wetsuit with a bug-eyed helmet that was able to shoot rays from its eyes, uh, and fashioned a high-tech submersible inspired by manta rays. Uh, taking the name Black Manta, he and his masked army became a formidable force, engaging in at least one unrecorded clash with Aquaman prior to his first appearance as a rival of the Ocean Master, and before short in sh- and before joining the short-lived Injustice League in the Retcon Silver Age third week event. Ah, so this yeah, okay. Yeah, interesting. Uh, ah, ah. Sorry, I always forget clicking down on it takes me back to where my mark where the marker thing is. Yep. Okay. His first name, uh yeah, here we go. His first name, David, is revealed in the 2010 Bright Brightest Day storyline, although his last name has not been revealed. Which leads me to the question as to where we get the last name. <laughs> Probably one they just took from a story i could see that also Honestly, maybe it probably has to do with something with a dad or something they used in a story later in an earlier version they're like we're gonna go with this even though nobody probably remembers it i i could see that also it could easily just be a fa- false name that he had he himself is given that is true too that with these villains you never know right really so uh what do we got here uh let's see then uh Black Manta and Aquaman battled repeatedly over the next several years. During one of these clashes, it is revealed that Black Manta is actually black, (laughs) whose stated objective at one point was to create an underwater colony where his people could be free from the persecution they faced on the surface world. During most of his appearance, his main goals are defeating Aquaman and gaining power for himself through the conquest of Atlantis. Finally, Manta kills Arthur Curry Jr., Aquaman's son, which leaves Aquaman obsessed with revenge. Dang. Yeah, but that's just how they continue their feud of going in circles. (laughs) Yeah, Jesus. Like, you know, you know, I have to say, a, vill- a lot of villains have done a lot of messed up things, but uh, straight up killing your son in front, killing someone's son in front of them. I feel like, you know, that, that's pretty Oh, yeah. Pretty that, one, there. that one was pretty rough. I do know, uh, I do know I was 
when, during the research and that. I did see, like, when he was first kind of introduced, like, in the old Aquaman show in comics and that, he was trying to take over Atlantis to find a new home for his oppressed brothers and sisters. I feel like that one's contested. Because I did change that because what I found in the official DC wiki was different, which is what we put in here. Okay. So I went with that because I'm going with what DC says officially. Nope, fair. That's a uh, and I'm because yeah, I've I've seen stories where it was the he's trying to conquer land for his people, and the other one's just like I just want to make a colony for them. You know, where it's one of I just want to help them. Another one I want to give them all this land and conquer someone else for them. Yeah. Which either one, like I, I get, I get, like you know that does slightly make him villain, considering he's trying to conquer another people to bring his people peace and that. But like I, I just find it, f- I find it odd that our fir- that one of uh, Aquaman's first major villains was a uh, person repping black, like like black representation, and being like, I want to find a place for my oppressed people. Uh, well, when it came out in the time it did, yeah. it makes sense. I mean, I'm not <laughs> saying that. I'm just saying DC. Another one in the box. Another one marked in the box. Well, they had to catch up with Marvel at this point. Because compared to them, they didn't have a lot at, at that time. True. But, uh, I mean, poor choice. I, 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 I'm not a fan of how they handled it. I mean, great villain. I love him as a villain in that. I'm just saying, like, that initial throw out there. We're like, a civil rights person. What do we think of that? Villain. <laughs> you know what, Steve? You have a great future here. <laughs> right. Okay, so let's uh, proceed on. So he would later be transformed into a human manta ray hybrid by the demon Neron in exchange for his soul. Though after a while, he returns to wearing his original outfit, which covers his new appearance. And at one point, he would he would engage drug smuggling in his new base in Star City, where he is opposed by returning Green Arrow and Aquaman. Which I I kind of think that's kind of a cool thing, like that. Like I feel like that one is a lot cooler than just a dude in a suit. Yeah. However, I definitely do not blame him for like putting the helmet back on. Oh, that makes sense. Because that. I mean, Dude, those laser beams in the comics and in a lot of the renditions are beast oh, yeah. powerful. I mean, that's kind of his main thing. Yeah. Like, uh, like yeah, no, those those laser beams will cut down some people. So, I, it's one of those, like, uh, yeah, I could see him just like, after a while just being like, you know what? I'm keeping the helmet. <laughs> yep. Okay. So, in later confrontations, Aquaman, sporting the Lady of the Lake's healing hand, reverses Neron's alterations to Black Manta. Unfortunately, Manta remains a violent criminal, lulling Aquaman into a false sense of partnership and almost killing the Sea King in the process. Which, you know, he's a villain. That kind of totally... Uh, that's on Aquaman. Why would you even think that he's not going to attempt Betr- to do something back to you? Yeah, betray you. Also, you know, healing hand. I need to get that comic because I'm just thinking, I'm like, how willing was he in that in that re-alteration? Probably not. Yeah. Because, like, having the pat, like, having the abilities of a Black Manta, just the, the breathing underwater, considering that's where you mostly work. Well, but when that's also what your suit does, what did he actually gain from that infusion? Ah, uh, knowing if it's, if the cords on a suit get cut in that, he doesn't have to retreat immediately. Well, but it's like, what else did he get, though? Like, what all did he actually benefit to where he'd not want it reversed? I imagine super swimming speed would be part of that deal. I mean, I don't think we ever actually saw, found anything that actually defined that, so... We really didn't, and even the stuff I found on... Talking about that, like yeah. when he had those abilities, there wasn't really. They're like, he's got things of a black man. So I'm like, care to elaborate on that? I think like, that's the issue. It's like, is he really gonna be that upset, or did he lose something important enough to where he would be, or is he just being a villain and I'm gonna kill my hero? I mean, I ultimately <laughs> the villain gonna kill the hero. So, but I feel like that's where the issue is with the. How willing was he to be turned back? Is True. what did he really lose out of all of this? Gills, yeah, you're potentially, not, yeah, potentially, possibly. 
Like that would be the hope. only like that'd be the only thing I could think of that would even make it worth not wanting to be changed. Yeah, I, I suppose that's correct. In later events, Black Manta is used as a genetic manipulation test subject to make water breathers. This succeeds. Since then, Black Manta has returned to the ocean to face Aquaman once again. I got my gills back, baby. Right. <laughs> And that's gonna help you with a man who can lift a lift a warship out of the ocean. Good luck, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> you keep going. Nobody said villains are smart. True. Okay. Black Manta would cause a disturbance in Sub Diego, which is a portion of the city of San Diego, which was submerged during an artificially generated earthquake, uh, in which Captain Marley is severely injured. Aquaman summons various predatory sea life to attack Black Manta and leaves him for dead. It is later revealed that Black Manta was able to survive by generating an electric charge with his suit. Now, that suit really does come in handy. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you kind of have to plan ahead and choose how to build the suit to survive the ocean. True. And anything and that might attack you. True. And he, he does. He does, a, he does a solid job with that stuff. Oh, yeah. Also, especially when you are facing a guy who controls sea life, you got to be able to protect against them. Oh, definitely. (laughs) But I would like to bring up like, okay, so I get, I get, um, leaving him for dead. Isn't the same as outright killing him. But at a certain point, shouldn't you? Well, that's always a big question with heroes is most of them don't want to kill. And so they'd rather leave him for dead and leave it to fate because they're not the ones killing him, technically. I mean, isn't that, though, the same issue Wonder Woman had with Shazam in the Justice League? A lie of a mission? A death of a mission? Isn't that a, kind of a similar... You go off that, then Batman's the biggest murderer of all. Oh, I'm not denying that either. <laughs> but it's the point, though, that <laughs> is not seen as bad, so a lot of the, a lot of the heroes just let them... Sur- let fate decide if they're gonna live or die. This is also probably why I wouldn't make it in the Justice League. <laughs> no, you 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 would. I mean, look at Wonder Woman. She does. Oh shit! Yeah, no, fair, fair. It's like I, yes, most heroes prefer not to kill. Some will. Yeah, true. You're and, right. I'm and I proud. feel like that's just what that is with Aquaman. It's like I don't really want to kill you, but we're gonna just see what happens. Like I said, as much as Wonder Woman's probably not my favorite, me and her probably would be sitting alone at the table. <laughs> yeah, just like look at all these, look at all these fake killers. <laughs> It's like, at least when me and you do it, we meant it. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> accepting applications for heroes now. <laughs> One year later, he overtakes Sub Diego, but is forced to flee when King Shark bites off his face. <laughs> I laugh every time I read it. Because <laughs> that, bru- that is some metal brutal stuff right there, man. Yeah, my, my question though is, one, where did King Shark come from? How does this really fit into this story at all? Because it's just kind of thrown in there. And how the hell do you survive? Okay, answer answer the first one. I feel like King Shark is just thrown into a lot of stuff. <laughs> he really is. That's DC's <laughs> like, like, I don't know if the story's interesting enough. Eh, throw King Shark in there. See what that does. <laughs> I, d- I definitely agree with the randomness of his appearances. Yeah, like, I feel like, especially it being an underwater city, maybe they just made up the weak excuse, like, maybe he was just checking it out, looking for a new place to live. Right. And then Manta attacks, and he's like, no, destroy new home. Well, that's the other thing. It's like, they don't really say what all leads up to King Shark biting his face off. Yeah, that too. But I just, I feel like Black Manta isn't the brightest because I feel like anybody in the comics who knows who King shark is and you being a guy who deals with the ocean a lot, maybe he should be on your list of things to look out for. Would I'm, I'm, I'm just saying I'd run. I would never be willing to really oh, yeah. take on King shark, which yeah. And then to answer your second question, comics, that's how he survived. <laughs> the only thing you can go with, cause you can't have, only a small section of your face bitten off by a shark. Yeah, like no. you lose most of your face. You if lose not most of your skull. Exactly. I, I'm like that's half your head. Like there's there's no way he should survive this. And King Shark's mouth 
isn't small by any stretch of the imagination. That's what I was saying. It's like, at best, you're losing half your head if King Shark bites your face off. Yeah, like that's <laughs> that's digging, that's breaking bone and digging into skull. <laughs> oh, comics. Right? When Aquaman dies at the end of the 2003 series, Black Band begins working for Libra as part of a secret society of supervillains. However, after Libra betrays the group and helps Darkseid conquer the Earth, Black Manta quits. I enjoy the image I have in my head of that, of him just like kind of turning in his security badge and being like, you know, I don't need this shit. Right. <laughs> it was like, I'll be, I'll send for my stuff. <laughs> Walking out as just chaos reigns behind him. Uh, yeah, I met that. That definitely fits. I don't know why that image is like in my head of how that goes, but because it sounds like those typical like cop stories where the cop turns in his badge, like nope, I'm done with this. Bye. Yep. But I just love the idea of him walking out of whatever secret facility as it's just <laughs> you see explosions happening. Right. Just like another Tuesday. For them, yes. <laughs> True. For villains, that actually is accurate. So uh, let's get into his powers and abilities now. See what this guy's packing. So Black Man possesses a keen scientific mind, is an expert in mechanical engineering and military tactics. And despite being skilled in hand-to-hand combat and sword sword fighting, he generally relies more on technology and strategic planning than direct physical confrontations which you definitely see a lot in the cartoons and everything, where he's always using his eye beams instead of actually fighting if he can. Oh, yeah, no. And and arguably, like, I give him credit for at least being skilled in hand-to-hand combat and, like, swords, because it's more of the... It's literally his last-ditch effort. Oh, yeah. It's never his... It's never his go-to. It's more of if they get past my troops and my eye beams, I have something. <laughs> Yeah, or if he gets caught, like you've have you seen in certain vit, uh, shows, shows like Young Justice, yeah, where he has to be in that hand to hand fight because he doesn't have his mask or something. Exactly. Like I will say, he's definitely not the best and most skilled combatant of, but is he at least he is at least skilled enough. He's skilled enough to be a, considered a threat. Yep. Like you don't drop your guard when you're like fighting him. So we, uh, what else we got here? Uh, would receive a serum that would give him some degree of advanced stamina endurance, which uh, that's actually kind of interesting, right? And arguably something that I could easily one see him doing, considering he, he literally sold his soul for black manta ray powers, right? And also, when you're taking on superhumans, you got to kind of take every advantage you have, you can. So if you heard about a thing that could just enhance you even the slightest, why not? Yeah, for me, that would be one. It would be like, it doesn't have to do much. But if it gives me some kind of an edge over the normal human, I'll take it. Exactly. If it just gives me that little bit of extra. Like, it doesn't have to put me on their level, but any I'll take any advantage I can get to get to their level. Yep. And uh, that would also... Uh, what else we got here? Uh, he would use a nigh invincible battle suit, which also would help him lift an additional 5,000 pounds more than he would just on his own. Holy cow. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess you got to do something to be able to fight in the water too. True. Fight in the water. Also his main adversary is a guy who, like I said, could lift like a battle cruiser out of the ocean. Yeah. Be able to con- Tend with that somehow. Exactly. Which I do I do like the wording of this because it's in addition, which implies that because the problem with certain mech suits in um, like the superhero and comic world is they take all the sh- all the strain off your body and that to a point where it can actually become detrimental in certain storylines for the character to keep wearing the suit because yep. they get muscle atrophy. Yeah, but that gives something interesting for the hero to have to overcome. Oh no, no, so. I'm not. I'm not saying it's uh, <laughs> I, like it's a great story device. Yep. I am saying I do enjoy this though, where he doesn't. It doesn't take away the yeah. fact that he is putting. I effort. feel like he probably did that on purpose. I wouldn't doubt it because any incarnation I've ever seen of the character, the character is 
like he is thinking ahead. He's very battle plan, but he's also very, he is a warrior. Yeah, he does. He so I imagine if they first gave him a mech suit and he's like, mm, no, that'll make me weak. That'll make me vulnerable. Yep. He wouldn't want it. <laughs> this allows him to still maintain like keeping his strength. And uh, what we got here is uh, this armor adapted to ocean environment, providing complete resistance to deep sea pressure and granting Black Manta the ability to breathe underwater. Which, you know, as we saw, there are certain comic lines where it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Guy keeps finding ways to breathe underwater without the suit. Yep. I just I imagine one of his henchmen is just like, why do you even keep the suit? Because I like it. For the laser eyes, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. It's, it's exactly. that, that kind of menacing, too. It really is a menacing looking. If I saw that come out of the water, I'd be like, done, done. Security job doesn't pay, <laughs> right. pay enough for this gig. <laughs> Got um, the cr- then I've seen like cartoons and stuff where he just shows up out of the dark, just blaring his eyes first. Yeah. It's all you see these giant beady red eyes. It's creepy. Yeah, I'd, I'd walk away right off of that, too. Yeah. Like, uh, no. I'd be like, you know what? This <laughs> job doesn't pay enough. <laughs> you win. You win. So the suit also includes a jetpack propulsion system that functions both in and out of water. That's kind of cool. And that's where, like, earlier, knowing this part of his suit, the whole Manta thing is like, what did you really gain that was not already being given by your suit that wasn't hugely... True. Problematic. True, actually. I feel like the Manta thing was just him. I don't know. I, was it worth your soul? <laughs> Given what all you already... I mean, this is a man who killed a dude's child in front of him. I don't think he's got much of a soul to give. <laughs> True. <laughs> I, I feel like the demon was like, for your soul. He's like, <laughs> see if you can scrape some shit out of there, bro. <laughs> right. Take what you can. <laughs> I also thought it was pretty cool. Uh, the suit has a telepathic scrambler. Which, you know, as many heroes that have telepathy, that makes plenty of sense. There's a weird amount that do. Especially in DC. Yeah. Like, that is one of their huge powers. That's a fairly large power that keeps popping up in DC. Like, uh... I mean, I grant, I guess Marvel has it a bit, but it's all 90% of the Marvel psychics or whatever are all mutants. Exactly. It's not just a r- power that just random characters have. Who yeah, not are- like DC. They at least, Marvel is explainable. Yeah. They're like, it's more of a, it's more of a prone to a mutant thing. <laughs> yeah. And this one in DC, it's like, oh, it's race, different races have it. And yep. a lot of different races have it. And everybody in that race has it. <laughs> Like you got the Martians, you got the Martians. You have so se- you have several groups that they've dealt with across the space, across space that have that ability. It's just yeah, it gets. Uh, you got Simon. You got there's a lot. There's a lot. Oh move, yeah, move, we're getting off topic though, Phil. So moving on. Uh, he ah, and a what uh, on top of a psychic telepathic scrambler. He, he also has a wide array of different weapons and gadgets, including twin swords, a hand trident, a wrist-mounted spear gun on the right arm, a harpoon, deployable miniaturized torpedoes, and a diving helmet that can discharge powerful optic blasts from the eye lenses, which we've been heavily discussing this whole time because <laughs> arguably in comparison to all his other gear, that's the most like, Oh yeah. Impressive. And it's also the most iconic for him too. True. Like, uh, like, yeah, I've seen him use some of the torpedo missiles he has and to great effect. Oh yeah. But I rarely see him use a lot of these other weapons. They've just mentioned. So then compared to his eye lenses, you know, Nothing gets used as often as those. Yeah, no, I mean... I, I think every fight he's in, he uses them at least once in every cartoon or movie. And why wouldn't he? Those things are beasts. Right. Like I, like I keep saying, I love those eye lenses. Uh, he would also have... Uh, Black Manta often uses also a variety of unique vehicles, such as a modified manta ray-shaped submarine for traveling underwater. These, these villains and heroes with their damn trope things. Right. Or their aesthetic. 
I mean, who am I to talk? I, I love aesthetics. So it kind of bugs me where it talks about the different vehicles, but it only mentions the ones. Like, I don't think I've ever seen him use another vehicle besides that. I'm really trying to dig deep. Like, I've only ever seen his submarine. I've never seen it, except for maybe, like, a small random propulsion unit or something underwater. I've, the most I've seen is, like, uh, yeah, basically an underwater water motorcycle thing. Yeah. That's just in black. Like, this guy is the is the evil Batman of the sea. Ah, moving on. Black Manta possesses a powerful mystical relic named the Black Pearl. Powerful Atlantean artifact that allows him to control the ocean at will. Which actually, um, that goes into one story plot where he heard about his son, Calder, uh, Atlantean, wielding, you know, wielding con- sea control and stuff. And he's like, oh my god, this person has the item that I want. And that led to him finding out that Calder was his son. Because he went hunting him down. Yep. But still, kind of a cool item to have. Yeah. It's like you control the animals, but I'm going to sh- rip them to shreds with the ocean water. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that one. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, we'll just giant, create a giant air pocket and they'll all just drown. Yeah, exactly. All right, it, it's not going to go good. <laughs> <laughs> just as he sends an arm, like a platoon of sharks af- after him, just, <laughs> just lifts them up <laughs> to the surface as they're all just... <laughs> Just dying. <laughs> so stupid. Right. Okay. Okay, moving on to his other appearances. Other media appearances. We got TV, which which it, there were a lot of small cameos that I didn't add in here. But these are the ones that are added in are mostly the ones that he was more prevalent in. Okay, fair. Nah, that's valid. So we got Young Justice, Harlequin, uh, would appear in Justice League Unlimited under a different name, Devil Ray. As Aquaman character rights weren't available at the time due to an Aquaman TV pilot being filmed at the time. And would serve as a Wonder Woman villain instead. I do not understand like rules and ownerships anymore. That that doesn't... yeah. Me and my boss were talking about that the other day. We were talking about who owns some character, and yeah, I don't understand the whole. Because technically, I remember that Aquaman show pilot being made. It was still under CW WB, a company WB owns. Like yep. it was still they all still owned it. I just it it, it made no sense to me because I remember when that happened. When he showed up in the show, I'm like Devil Ray. That's not that guy's name. So weird, but uh, moving on. He also appears in Justice League animated series as a mercenary that Orm hires to assassinate Aquaman. This role is ultimately given to Deadshot as it was considered inappropriate for his character. Which I had to add that in because I knew it would be a talking point because I find it funny they consider it inappropriate for the fact that's his whole story. That. That's kind of his purpose, isn't it? Like, that is what his character does. Like, how is this inappropriate? <laughs> also, he's a mercenary. Even even if it's not killing, uh, he's still being hired to kill other. That is <laughs> what? Yeah, that that's how I felt when I first read that sentence in the wiki. I'm like, no, it makes less sense that you took him off the job. <laughs> yeah, that makes almost no sense. You took him off the job. I, I don't I don't get that their ideas. This is the Morpheus hand suckers all over again. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that, that, don't that, don't make a film. <laughs> <laughs> all right, moving on to his film. I'll let you take the reins. So he has currently only one appearance live action from the 2018 Aquaman, but he is set to return in the second Aquaman in 2022. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. He has a couple of animated uh, pictures that he was in from Justice League, The New Frontier, Superman slash Batman, Public Enemies, Justice League, The Flashpoint Paradox, which that one was interesting because he was actually a bodyguard to Aquaman in that. Yeah, that was a dark. That was an 
awesome movie. I uh, I still and honestly, I kind of love the. I prefer the movie over the comic because I read the graphic novel. Prefer the movie. I feel like it'd be easier for them to clean it up and make it more it, visually appealing. It was more visually appealing than that, but like his laser beams in that one were oh wait, fry that half that guy's face off. I was like, damn. <laughs> So he also appears in Justice League, Throne of Atlantis, the Legos DC comic superheroes, Justice League, Attack of the Legion of Doom. That's a lot of words. Yeah, I had when I saw that, I had to actually go over the title to make sure it was actually one title. Because that seems like several, t- like three titles in one. Yeah, that's what I saw. I'm like, there's no way that's the one name. Okay, well, damn. Dyslexics be damned. <laughs> So, and his last two were Suicide Squad, Hell to Pay, and Just the like, Dark Apocalypse War. Huh, I don't know he showed up in Hell to Pay. I'm going to have to rewatch that. Yeah, I don't even remember that one. It's been a long time since I've seen that. Apocalypse War, I think I remember him having a small part. He, wasn't, yep. he definitely wasn't a main. Most of these, I think, except for, obviously, Flashpoint, Throne of Atlantis. I feel like a lot of them were smaller parts in all of them. And he's an intro. What bothers me is he's an he's kind of a compelling character in the way he goes about about things. Like he's an interesting character. I don't yeah. know why he, they don't give him more front because being the enemy to a character who doesn't get a lot of front himself. True. I think that's where he kind of falls through the cracks is because Aquaman doesn't get a lot of his own stuff and where he's the front of the show. True. Uh, that Okay, that does make sense. When half of his list is Justice League related, it makes sense that he sees l- less um, a screen time. Fair. No, that's a valid point. Okay, and we got video games now. Aquaman Battle for Atlantis for Xbox and GameCube, just to let you know how old that one is. Yeah, that was the original Xbox. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, it's been twenty over twenty years. Uh Young Justice uh Legacy. Which I don't think I ever played or heard about that one. I've never even heard of that one. DC Universe Online, I've heard of that one. Uh, which originally in that one, he was only alluded to by a costume. Oh. Eventually did become um, two raid bosses later on. So he officially now shows up in the game. Okay. But originally he wasn't even in it. It was just kind of alluded to him. Oh, that's kind of cool. Uh, I, I like that they capitalized on it. Yep. Then we got DC Unchained. Don't know that game. Um, I'm sure it's probably fine. Uh, Fortnite. <laughs> Which I'd actually read an article the other day about people complaining about all the crossovers. And apparently it's like some portal, kind of like when they did the Marvel or the, I can't think of it, the Mortal Kombat in DC. Oh, one. DC. Yeah. It DC was kind of versus... how they had the portal that transports them to the different universe. Oh. That's what happened with the Fortnite one. Huh. But like they lose all their memory except for all their muscle memory. So they're still really good fighters, but they don't know who they are. It's kind of their way of getting these characters into this. Kind of I, I, I feel like I would have gone a different route if I was the game creators as far as the storyline for to explain that. Considering the universe they're in, would have been more explainable to be like these are uh, genetic clones of warriors from past and alternate I, universes. For a game that is more meant for their battle royale, their story is not their main focus, so it makes sense. It's kind of weak. Yeah, but I'm, <laughs> like, I'm just saying, given what the game also is, just all the science shit, I'm like that would would have made better. I think, but also, why do we even need an excuse when there really is no story? Because people getting mad at Fortnite taking everybody's stuff. I mean, I guess. I you know, it's a kid for I mean, game. It's a game. Game, game, game for keep, kids. This is a game that keeps getting sued for stealing other properties' stuff. Oh, like sh- they they got attacked by Carlton for taking his dance. <laughs> They've gotten hit a lot. So I think that was just enough people were complaining about why are these characters here? Well, that gives me. And someone's like, "Hey, here's a story." That, g- that gives me a legit reason to hate the game then, because originally I didn't hate the game. I, I'm like, I'm like, it's a game for kids. What, why is everybody dogging out? Who cares? Usually, it's mostly the community around the game that most people hate the game for. It's not that they hate the game; they hate the people that play the game. 
I mean, maybe. I don't really pay that's, attention. I'm just saying that's usually I, I what could, it is. I could see that. I, I don't pay attention to them. So yeah. And that, but uh, yeah, don't don't steal art. Don't steal art or property, kids. And that you buy that like a, like Americans. Okay, so we're stealing. <laughs> <laughs> you buy that like America tells you to buy it. <laughs> do as they say, not as they do. <laughs> we're better than that. <laughs> okay, so we got Lego Batman two and three. Which okay, uh, Lego DC Super Villains, which is an interesting game I keep hearing about it with all these characters we're doing. As yeah, we keep talking about villains, like oh yeah, I'm reminded of this game again. <laughs> we might have to look into that. Injustice, Gods Among Us, only mentioned. Okay, and Injustice Two, both as part of the transition on the Atlantic. Atlantis stage and a DLC. Pl- oh my god, they made a playable character in the game. <laughs> I haven't bought that game yet, so I I have it. I think on my PlayStation. Mm, I might have to give you some money. <laughs> we, we need to play. Okay, no. Uh, so those are his appearances. A fairly, in my opinion, underrated character that I think needs more time. I also think Aquaman needs more time in the spotlight, which. I was hoping Jason Momoa would give us that. I mean, he is. He is. It's just, it's still not as popular of a character as the rest of DC. True. That The fact that he even has two movies based on him is kind of amazing. Fair, fair, but I, I've always enjoyed the character. I like Black Manta as a villain, and honestly, I'm a fan. What about you, Joker? Yeah, I, I'm definitely a fan. He was definitely a interesting one to he's always been a kind of fun one to watch and see yeah. fight and what he does kind of his whole like weird skewed honor code thing yeah too. and you never really actually see a lot of villainous stuff except for when he kills Aquaman's kid yeah true most of the time he's just he's just a mercenary it's the job it's not yep so I definitely like that about him as a quote-unquote villain true and yeah with that for anyone that's still listening if you got something out of this, enjoyed the episode, or even liked the character before from a movie, a comic, a cartoon, hell, even that t-shirt that you saw one time, you're a fan too. If you want to jump on this train, why not subscribe and share with a friend? Dick Rail out. Y'all keep riding them rails.